Do My name is Ricky Grove first. <laughs> okay, perfect. I'm a machinima filmmaker with a background in classical theater. This is my first SIGGRAPH. Oh, okay. I, you know, I've, been, I've been to a lot of large events, but I've never been to an event that is well designed and well conceived as, as this one. This is a ter oh, terrific place. Are you finding a lot of inspiration here? Well, that's my first thing. Uh, as soon as I came here and I, I took some notes at the end of the day and it was just like, I had this energy and this excitement. I just wanted to make things, you know? Yeah. And I think any event that it get, gets you going like that, yeah. that puts ideas, creative ideas in your head, I think is just fantastic. Yeah. So I, tell, tell me about the project you're working on. So what are, what are you getting ideas for? Well, I have um, multiple ideas. What, again, my background is in classical theater and I uh, came and worked in film in Hollywood for a while became somewhat disenchanted with that. And out of that, I began to look for sort of alternate, alternative media uh, sources for art. And I came across Machinima, a uh, somewhat clumsy named art form. Yeah, so tell me a little bit about that for people who might not know what that is. Well, Machinima came out of the game demo um, scene in about 1998, 1999, where um, uh, hardcore gamers began to figure out that they could hack the game and uh, create a camera system because the camera, which is the first person point of view for somebody in a game, they, could, they figured out how they could hack that and move the camera to another place. Right. And as soon as they figured that out, they said, well, I can make a movie. Okay, right. So they started making movies out of that. And eventually somebody says, well, what is this? Well, it's a machine and it's cinema. Let's call it machinima. Of course, the spelling is strange because it's a misspelling of machine <laughs> cinema. But right. I think it was Hugh Hancock and Ben Grusey, I think, were the okay. guys. Who, Hugh Hancock was the founder of Machinima.com. Okay. So I went there and I found a fellow named Jason Choi. He started out as a Machinima filmmaker and we met. And he said, let's make a movie and I want to make it in Max Payne. Uh, okay. The engine of Max Payne. Yes. So over six months, we, we made a film. Oh, beautiful. And it turned out really good. <laughs> it was called Only the Strong Survive and it became very popular. And I realized that this was a very interesting art form because the types of people involved in the art form were very different from the other the kinds of people that I've been associated with in Hollywood and also in um, classical theater. Okay. So I began to develop uh, skills in uh, voice acting, in uh, hacking different game engines, <laughs> okay. in uh, creating uh, models and uh, doing animations. Right. And it was really exciting because uh, it depended on which game that was coming out. Yeah. And, and I realized that my whole sense of games began to change yeah. because I started not thinking of games in terms of playing games, but what movie could I make in this game? Oh, interesting. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you're using the, the games really as an atmosphere. That's in exactly a lot of ways. right. What the game does is, uh, I, I'm, and by the way, the game companies began to pay attention to this new I can imagine art form, that they would, yeah. And they saw it as kind of an extension of the mod community. Oh. Exactly. And what they did is they began to create more tools in order to make movies easier. So over the years, uh, the tools have become progressively more sophisticated. Yeah. So now today, the difference between a, a, a high-end film yeah. uh, often is just distribution. Yeah. A little bit of quality and animation and some of the, the, the rendering capabilities for the 3D figure. Yeah. But for the most part, it's absolutely fantastic. Wow, that's amazing. And these are from desktop computers. Exactly You're right. using off-the-shelf uh, type of uh, things that people well, are finding. The key is is that you can have a movie studio for $49.95. <laughs> that's perfect. That's basically it. So that's in a way, I call it sort of poor man's Pixar. Oh, I like it. Poor man's Pixar. I, yeah. I like the idea of yeah. that. And you said something about distribution. That's that's kind of an interesting thing with that, I would imagine. Exactly. Yeah. That's the cool thing because it's an entirely different way of releasing your movies. So um, along with the rise of sort of user-generated content and uh, YouTube and Vimeo and other places like that, yeah. people began to realize that they could make their own films. Yeah. And there was a hit. Uh, one of the key things that happened in the history of uh, Machinima was uh, a series called Red vs. Blue. Okay. It was done in the Halo engine. Oh, perfect. It's, it was absolutely oh fantastic. Oh my gosh. Absolutely fantastic. Wow. It's actually in its seventh season. Oh my gosh. It was so popular that Microsoft immediately came to them and said, we want you guys to do this for us. Yeah. And they immediately hired them and now it's called Booster Team is the name of the, <laughs> the company. And what they did is they took um, the basic structure of, of Halo mm -hmm. and they created this sort of absurdist Joseph Heller Catch-22 situation where a team is red and a team is blue and their fighting is completely absurd. 
Oh, wow. And it's all very comic. It's the high production values. They turn them out really fast, and they're very exciting. Yeah. So people began to realize uh, in Hollywood and other places that there was some value here. And so they started to create teams were formed to start to, to make films and individuals began to work more to create all sorts of interesting kinds of films. And so that's what you're doing now. You're, are you working right. as a part of teams? You're working as a part small of... Teams. Small teams. Um, just the other day I was at a, uh, uh, a talk in which the... Oh, it was Ed Catmull's uh, main speech in which he was talking about teams and what I was trying to do is take this concept of having 120 people or 70 people and put it down to three people. <laughs> but perfect. you know, it's interesting because many of the things he was saying really actually apply to just three people. Right. You know, yeah. where people are more important than the particulars of the job. Right. Hiring them, you know, the, you want to have the high quality, but you have to have the best people to do it. Absolutely. So that's uh, partially what my, one of my personal goals in Machinima is to um, emphasize Machinima as an art form. Yes. And uh, along with several other people, Ingrid Moon, uh, a fellow named Phil Rice, is a terrific, terrific guy. Yeah. And uh, Damien Valentine, all who are established Machinima filmmakers, we created a site called Machinaplex. Oh, beautiful. And what it is, it's a site devoted entirely to quality Machinima. And by quality, yeah, it's a certain subjective quality, but we all feel we have enough experience to know when a film is really good and when a film is not. Yes. And what we do is we set up premieres in Second Life. Okay. So, yeah. and I took the idea from theater. Yes. So what we would do is we would get a hold of the filmmaker, release the film, say, two or three days before the premiere, yeah. and then on a Sunday, invite everybody to Second Life right. to show the film in real time and then have a Q&A afterwards with the director. Oh, how fun. And it's actually, we've done about eight of those yeah. so far, from films as far away as uh, Croatia, the UK, <laughs> Korea, wow. um, the United States, and these people come from all over the world. Yeah. We usually have 30 to 50 people, right. and some people who show up are just curious in Second Life, yeah. and they've been very successful. Oh, that's amazing. And it encourages the idea of, being, of, of seeing films as an art form, for one thing, but also taking them apart and looking at them, what works in this film? How, how can we, how, what can we do, what does this film do that other films didn't? Right, now, perfect. To that end, which you'll be <laughs> interested in, uh, I and several of my friends who run Machinaplex have created an animation festival this fall. Okay. And uh, we're going to have a keynote speaker, we're going to have juried awards, we're going to have several prominent members of the Machinima community do panels, uh, Real Illusion is going to show up and do demos of their work. Oh, it's beautiful. It's a three-day affair and I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm really looking forward to it. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks.